This ship is stranded in space with no power and the people have decided it's their planet now. But maintaining a society in space is not as easy as it sounds. An elevator is taking people out of Earth and onto a gigantic spaceship named Aniara, which is leaving on a voyage to Mars. Earth has been completely destroyed by human activities and humanity has no choice but to shift to Mars now. Aboard the elevator is one of the ship's employees, the Mimarob. Her job on the ship is to operate an artificial intelligence machine named Mima, which accesses human memories and allows people to revisit Earth and its beauty. The ship has its own algae farms to make oxygen and water for people. It also has restaurants, shops, bars, clubs, and essentially all parts of human life. The voyage to Mars will take three weeks' time, and the ship is more than equipped for that journey. Mimarob shares a room with the ship's leading astronomer. The astronomer is a little bit too blunt and a little bit too pessimistic. The routine voyage gets underway. The Mimarob, or MR, is telling people about the wonders of Mima, but no one seems to care as people are far more interested in the materialistic offerings of the ship, such as malls, bars, and clubs. Next, while Emzar is explaining to some people how Mima works, some debris is seen flying through space. The debris hits the ship, and the ship is taken off course. The debris has hit the fuel tanks of the ship which have caught fire. The captain, Chafon, has no choice but to eject all the fuel, but this causes them to lose control of the ship completely. Chafon calls all the ship members into the main hall for an announcement. He tells the people that the ship has had to eject all the fuel and they have lost the ability to steer. They are stranded off course. The captain informs the people that they don't have to worry because the ship will be able to turn around using the gravity of the next celestial body they encounter. However, being completely adrift in space, the journey could take at the very least two years. People are not happy about this and they start having panic attacks at the thought of being stranded in space. Esther takes one of the ladies having panic attacks to Mima to calm her down. Afterward, Mester goes back to her room and her astronomer roommate asks her how she's doing. Mester says she is fine, and the astronomer compliments her on her ability to repress her emotions. Chefone and the ship crew discuss the food situation on the ship. The cook of the ship says the restaurant has enough food to last them two months, but after that, they'll have to survive on the algae which will sustain the people, but it doesn't very taste good. After a while, the people become tired of the material offerings of the ship and suffer from more panic attacks. As a result, a lot more people start coming to Mima to calm themselves. M-Star needs more employees to manage the situation. She goes to the captain's deck to ask for help, but she doesn't get to meet the captain. At the deck, she sees a woman from the flight crew named Isagil and Emzar is very clearly attracted to her. Afterward, Esther goes for a swim, and while she's there, Isigal comes for a swim too. It's Emzar's lucky day as she gets to perv on Isigal, but Isigal notices. Amster apologizes, but Isigal smiles. They are clearly into each other. Back in her room, Mister asks the astronomer which celestial body they'll use to turn around and get back on course. The astronomer says there is no celestial body to turn at, and the captain probably already knows this. The astronomer goes to sleep, but Emster cannot sleep and she has a panic attack. She rushes to Mima to calm herself down. The next day, another man has a panic attack because apparently the astronomer has also told him that they will not be turning back on course and are stranded. Mester brings him to Mima to calm him. Mima is full now because everybody wants to use it all the time. Mester goes to the captain directly and asks for more employees to help around Mima. She accidentally lets slip that she knows they are stranded. The captain says that once people are used to eating algae, he'll tell them the truth. He says it's nothing to worry about because this ship is basically a planet itself, and they can live on it indefinitely. Next, we skip to year three of life on the ship. Life has gone on. People now have jobs in the algae plants and water purification plants. Emsar is seen at a club where she meets a guy named Daisy. She sucks Daisy's face outside the club when Isigal walks by. Mester is concerned that Isigal saw her with another person and will think differently of her now. Next, Mester is seen making love to Daisy, but she jumps off midway and Daisy is left to finish the job himself. Poor Daisy. Mester is still working at Mima and people are using it daily. Some people offer her money to let them use it for longer, but she denies the offer. She goes back inside and sees that Isigal is using Mima. Mister pervs on her while he she lays down. 
Mester tells Isigil that the thing with Daisy meant nothing, and Isigil shows no reaction to this. Esther is frustrated and she tells the astronomer about it. The astronomer points out the futility of her love given the situation they are trapped in. She says they're stranded in space, so everything is pointless. The next day, Emster is using Mima when her vision turns catastrophic. She's worried and checks Mima's circuits. People arrive to use Mima, and while the people are using it, Mima speaks to Mr. Mima says she's tired of humans and their destruction, which she has seen in their memories. Mr. asks everyone to leave the Mima Hall and people are outraged. The captain calls Emstar and asks her why she did this. She requests that Mima is tired and needs to be closed in order to recover. Captain refuses this because morale will take a hit if Mima is closed. People are allowed back into the Mima Hall, but Mima has had enough. She announces loudly that humans will always destroy everything in their path and self-destructs. A memorial is held for Mima and people blame Emzar for Mima's death. They say she locked Mima and used it too much for herself. Chiffon gives orders to punish. Mr. Isigil goes to the Chiffon and stands up for Mr. She says he cannot punish Mr. for what happened, but the captain replies that he can do whatever he wants. Isigil punches the captain and the flight crew captures and beats up Isigil. They also capture Mr. Isigil and Emster are locked up together. They hold hands. We skip to year four on the ship. Different cults have formed on the ship which pray to the stars and perform other rituals. Suicides on the ship are becoming frequent. The captain needs more crew and hence brings Isigil and Mr. out of prison. They are a couple now. They are given jobs. Mzar is going to teach young kids. They get their own room to live in together. They shower together and finally get to make love to each other properly. Amster teaches kids at a makeshift school. After their jobs, Mr. and Isigil go for a swim and after the swim, they go to a sauna. In the sauna, they meet a cult member. She informs Mr. and Isigil that the cult is going to perform a ritual at Mima's grave to canonize Mima, and they must come. Mr. and Isigil go for the ritual. The ritual turns out to be an orgy in which Mr. and Isigil happily participate. We skip to year five on the ship. Isigil is pregnant from the orgy and she is depressed because there are no possibilities or opportunities here, and she is giving birth to a prisoner. The baby will be born in the darkness, she says. Mester wants to cheer Isigil up and she asks Chiffon if she can build a beam screen, so the windows show nice pictures instead of the darkness of space. Chiffon says she needs to focus on teaching future generations. That's her job. Isigil gives birth to a baby boy, but she is still depressed. She almost kills the baby by drowning him, when the ship crew calls her and breaks her out of her depressed trance. Emster is also called to the control room. The astronomer has discovered an object in space that is headed their way. It looks like a space probe that could have fuel, and if they harvest it, it could help them turn around and get back on course. Everyone is excited. Chiffon announces to the public that the probe will reach them in a year. We skip to year six. The object spotted earlier is finally nearing the ship and is brought in. Everyone is excited. Experiments are conducted on the object, but it turns out it is not made of any known elements. Research continues in hopes that some fuel would be found from the object, but in vain. The people on the ship start getting restless again, and Isigil starts getting depressed again. The astronomer who previously had high spirits becomes hopeless again. She starts telling people they are doomed. Chiffon warns her not to spread panic among people. She says she will not be a hypocrite, and Chiffon takes a guard's gun and shoots her. After the astronomer's funeral, Emsar is depressed, and she takes an acid tablet to cope. While she's tripping balls, the cult woman is having a panic attack, and Isigil is trying to put their baby to sleep. Daisy goes out of the room, and Emster follows him because she wants to dance. While they are dancing, the ship goes through a space cloud, which violently shakes the ship, killing most of the passengers. Isigil and the baby somehow survive. Following the accident, there aren't a lot of students left to teach, and so MR is allowed to work on her beam screen. Meanwhile, Isigil is getting more depressed every day. One day, Mester is finally done working on the beam screen. She turns it on and giant pictures of beautiful nature show up on both sides of the ship. Mester is excited and she runs to see Isigil's reaction, but finds out that Isigil has killed herself and the baby. Mester is horrified at the sight and screams. She is inconsolable following this. We skip to year 10. Chiffon is getting ready for a presentation, In the Knot. So fancy presentation, he awards a distraught-looking MR with a medal for her beam screen project. 
Mester notices cuts wrapped up on Chiffon's wrists, meaning he has also attempted suicide. She comes back to her room and falls on her bed. The water on the ship runs brown. The algae are no longer green. We skip to year 24. The ship is completely dark. No systems are online. Only a dozen people are left alive. They are malnourished and praying with their last breaths. We skip to year 5,981,407. This is the year when the ship actually finally reaches a celestial body, but there is not a single soul alive on the ship. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.